Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I want to start a new playthrough session and that's War of the Worlds, which is pretty much a game that has been basically requested by some of my patrons on Patreon. Nudge nudge. And yeah, um, you don't really see a lot of war games on my channel, but I really think this is easy enough that even I will be able to master it. So yeah, let's find it out. Okay, and yeah, that's the initial setup for the England version of the game. Some things are done randomly, especially where those waves or cylinders go. But apart from that, the majority of things to do is pretty much carved in so stone. One thing that you also do randomly is assigning those tripods for those waves. So this is the area for the real wave and this is the area for the cylinder. Pretty much the thing that will get transformed into a wave relatively soon soon I suppose. You can win this game in two ways. The most likely one is to bring up your germ counter up to 10. In order to move your germ counter one space you need to acquire 10 of those human victory points. So we are talking about of 100 victory points. The second way to win this game is to remove all of those wave or cylinder markers on this strategic map here. That's really tough and I think really only likely if you go after those guys from the beginning of the game like crazy and even then it seems really tough to beat the game this way but I may be wrong. The Martians on the other hand win immediately when they complete their flying machine so if they're pretty much rolling well so the Mar flying machine consists of four spaces normally they can do that once per round so yeah after four rounds in theory you could already lose this game and the second way to lose the game is when the Martian colonization token makes it up to 10 points so pretty much also talking about 100 victory points for the Martians here. Okay I think without further ado let's get right into the game as usual I will explain all the rules as I go so we will always start each round with a so-called production phase. Next we would check our event deck in order to see if something will happen during this production phase. So if this card would now show production phase we would trigger an event. As I shuffle this this pile like crazy, I still want to give it a cut, so I don't really know what will come up. So I will do the cut right here. No, nothing will happen during the production phase. So the next card that will trigger will be during the human action phase like this. So we can jump right into the production phase which means we will count all the gears on our production size right now and of course I already did that. We will start this game with 20 production points. Not really bad. Definitely something we can work with. And next we can pretty much produce stuff or move units around and there we have this handy dandy little cheat sheet which shows us which unit costs was. So we could go for an infantry for 10, a cavalry for 10, we can go for a random harbor, we can go for a field gun, a siege gun or a warship. Warships are only being acquired when we really do a naval battle, so nothing that will happen right now. On top of this we can also spend two coins or two production points in order to move units around. So let's see and actually I'm really thinking of spending 12 bucks or production points in order to go for a field gun. So I'm at eight production points now and I'm allowed to place those units in those areas that show this little factory icon here. So like Birmingham and I think this is where I want to place my first field gun here. I think I will spend two more of those production points in order to build a harbor which means I put them all in this cup here and we'll draw one at random really not looking and that's the harbor of Leeds which we will place accordingly and we need those harbors later in order to help our refugees to escape which is one of the ways in order to get victory points in this game at least for the human side the other way you gain victory points for all of your factories or production sites that are still active at the end of your round pretty much. I think I want to hold on to my remaining six production points here and this also ends my production phase. 
So let's move into the battle phase. We don't see any battles whatsoever. We also don't see an event here. So we go right into the devastation phase, which we can skip as well, because the only wave we have right now is here in Wales. And the starting region where those first wave is being placed is automatically devastated anyway. And yeah, as soon as one of those zones is devastated, you don't do anything else. Those guys could move later on, but right now during this devastation phase, they're not doing anything else. The same is true for those cylinders up there. They're just basically waves to be born. Okay, then let's move into the human action phase. And now we have to resolve our encounter card or event card here. And this says extra dynamite, save this card. The next green result you roll for a cylinder destruction action destroys two tripods in the waves. Wow, that's so awesome. Definitely want to hold on to this card. Great. Hopefully I will not forget that. And the next event will trigger during the next production phase, it seems. During the human action phase, I can do all sort of things like moving my units around, like building powder kegs, like um, attacking those cylinders up there. And maybe this should have been something I should have considered rather than building this field gun, building one of those infantry units, because infantry units can attack those um, cylinders before they get actual waves and try to destroy those tripods before they get a wave. Could be pretty powerful, but yeah, it's definitely still something I could consider for the next round, especially with my extra dynamite, which I have now. Okay, let's move into the escape phase and we don't really do any escapes, but I skill, still score my victory points for this round, which is pretty simple. I simply count all my active production sites here. That's 10, which means I just scored my first 10 victory points. I can trade those in for my first movement on the germ track, which pretty much means I have yeah, won this game 10%. How cool is that? But that's already the end of the escape phase. Let's move into the Martian action phase. And now each wave will roll once on this table here, depending on the zone which is in. Right now we only have one zone, oh, one wave. This wave is in a destroyed or a red weed zone. So let's simply roll the die and resolve the result. That's yellow. Yellow means arrival. So we simply add one random tripod to this wave. This is another green one. So this wave just gotten bigger. It's now five tripods, which is really, really tough to be beat. Let me show you this. But that's already the end of the Martian action phase. More or less, of course, we still gain some victory points. And here's something I'm not 100% sure about. If you roll first, if you upgrade those devastation or destroyed zone markers to a red reed zone because they score them more victory points, or if you first gain the victory point or the Martian gain the victory points, and then you would flip it. So I will play it tougher. So I will roll first and on the red result, which is pretty much a six or one, however you want to put it, we would flip this to the other side. No, that's green. So the Martians will now score, oops, one, two victory points for that. Let's move into the assembly phase. Then we check if this handling machine will be able to upgrade this cylinder into an actual wave, which could be a problem. Of course, we would roll the color die. This is a green handling machine, by the way. And yeah, this die has 50% likeliness of rolling a green. So yeah, count on it for sure. And yes, absolutely. So we will exchange this wave two cylinder into a wave two real token, which means this token will now also start devastating the area. It will move around the strategic make really, really a bad start. Yeah, this was already the first full round. So let's move back into the production phase. I think I will do one more. As we already know, we have to do a production event. So let's see what it is. And that's a governmental action. We may roll a die now. 50% chance of losing four production points. We could gain one human victory point or we could gain one production point. Oof, why not? Let's go for it. It's very likely we are losing four production points. Yes, that's the case. So this guy is going down one, two, three and four. Of course, we still gain our production points. The number hasn't changed. So we gain 20 production points on top of that. So we are at 22 now. And I think I want to spend all 22 of those points to build an infantry unit 
and a field gun here in Newcastle because it's relatively likely that this wave will move over to Newcastle at the end of the round during the Martian action phase. So I want to be prepared. If they're not moving, I can still strengthen my defenses here and maybe then really go in for an attack, for example. Also something that's possible. Again, I have not played this game a lot, pretty much only one training session so far. So bear with me as I will do a lot of stupid mistakes and decisions doing this playthrough here. And yeah, if you want to help me, please leave your comments in on YouTube, on BGG, wherever you find this video. And yeah, I really try to put them into my thinking for the follow-up episodes of my playthrough here. Again, we don't have a battle phase, but we do have a devastation phase and we also have an event card here. And the next event card will happen during the assembly phase. But let's check out this card first. Well, that's a nasty one. Swift destruction, the wave with the fewest tripods devastates twice, which is the guy up here in Scotland. Okay, but let's start with wave one down in Wales. Ah, but of course, they will not do anything because they're already in a devastated zone. So we'll, they will stay where they are. But let's quickly check out wave two, which currently consists of four tripods. But first of all, we would have to see what weapon they are going to use. So that's green, the heat ray, yellow, the black smoke, or uh, red, the panic one. That's red, which means panic. We check the numbers of tripods in wave, which is a four. So we check out this result here, which says minus two workforce. We get four refugees and we would lose two victory points. How mean is that? So that's one, two, minus two workforce, which is still okay. So this is still a producing or producing site for us. So it's still giving us one victory point, which is definitely something next you would have to place four refugees here, which pretty much um, exceeds the limit of this zone. Right now, this zone has only one gear, so it can hold only up to one refugee. Good thing is we can still move those guys around. Everything that's still here at the end of the round with the wave will be gone for good pretty much. And this will give the Martian side here up to four victory points. So they gain one victory point for each refugee they are chewing up pretty much and transforming into the wet reed. But of course we also have to lose two victory points, which means this goes back down to zero and this H marker. So the human victory point so it goes up to eight so you can really lose victory points if you are at zero then nothing to lose there the problem now is they will do the same thing again so it's very likely we are losing this production site after all i think there is no result no i think it will be done now there's nothing okay again they're using panic again the workforce goes down by two which was really close now so this thing cannot go beyond zero so we will just replace it with one of those devastation markers so that's at least two more victory points for the martian each round now we will stop here we will not do uh, spawn any more refugees on the board we will not lose any more victory points this is really the worst thing that can happen if you devastate a song which is definitely a bad thing that's for sure and yeah this was then really the end of the devastation phase so let's move into the human action phase and now we really have to move those um refugees out of Scotland. Unfortunately, there's no harbor here, so we cannot move them or have them escape right away. So let's move two units here to Newcastle. It has two gears, so it can support up to two refugees. And those guys will move down to Liverpool, which also has two gears here. So right now, those refugees are fine. They will not score me any victory points right now, but they may do so when we have them escaping the island. In theory, we could still move up some of those folks here for the uh, infantry into Scotland, maybe also the field guns. So we may see a battle happening sooner or later. But I think right now I don't feel like it because they will come down anyway. And I would really rather want to produce something first and then move in. I think moving into a battle with two field guns, you kind of have a chance if you really uh, with one field gun it's really really long shot that's for sure and i think this ends our human action phase so we move into the escape phase unfortunately those guys will have to make it to leads before they can make their escapes and this is really something that you have to consider really do you really want to bring on harbors into the game as early as possible or do you need the money or production point for something else? In this case, yeah, if I would have been lucky and would draw the harbor of Newcastle here, yeah, those guys could now escape. Of course, 
it's also not very likely that we'll, they will escape that easily, but at least there is a chance. Now this could score me two victory points, which is really important. So we will also skip the escape phase, at least in respect to those actions. We go into the victory point step. We just scored 10 victory points. We lost one zone, which means nine more victory points. So this goes down to seven. The German marker will move up accordingly. This was the escape phase. Next we move into the Martian action phase. So again we start here with wave one down in Wales. Those guys are in a destroyed zone so let's roll the die accordingly. Now those guys would move. So let's have a look at the move table and from Wales they would either move to Birmingham or to Bristol depending on the roll. That's Birmingham which is interesting because we have some um, field guns waiting for there in Birmingham. So now we do have an incentive to build something more powerful up here and maybe really try to at least um, weaken this wave a little bit because the fewer tripods to have the let's say um, weaker their attack or their devastation stab will be. So that's really something to keep in mind. Maybe we are not getting completely rid of this token but we can still weaken it yeah in order to protect or gain some time actually. Of course, let's also check for Scotland here. This wave is also in a destroyed zone. That's green, though they will move to. Let's see where they would move. They will move to Newcastle. And I guess that's really bad news for those guys because during the assembly phase, I think they will eat everything alive. Or does it happen in the assembly phase? No, it doesn't. It really happens right after the Martian action phase. But let's first of all roll for those um, counters up there for those devastation markers. So here in Scotland first on a red it will flip down here in Wales. It's also green. That's fine. Here we have some refugees in this wave. Those guys will get consumed which means Martians just gained one two victory points and they gain one two three four more because of their devastated areas out there on the board. So they're already coming closer and I really feel I'm already about to lose this game. But of course the game is still relatively young so I'm really hoping to repair some of the things later on, especially trying to move those refugees here to Leeds or maybe hope for a harbor here in Liverpool, make them escape, gain some more victory points for those. But yeah, let's find out and see. Next thing to do is to move into the assembly phase. We don't have any um, cylinders on the board, but we still have an event and I think we still have to trigger it. And again, we are so unlucky. That's a cool card. The malfunction for each handling machine and cylinder in the same zone. Destroy one tripod in the cylinder. Wow, what a blow. Unfortunately, yeah, we don't have any of those out on the board. Wow, this hurts like crazy. By the way, the next event to happen will be doing the escape step. But yeah, this is something that will happen at basically the end of the next round. But I think I will end my playthrough for today, give you some room to comment on my playstyle and maybe correct some of the errors I may have done. And it I agree it's kind of a boring episode because there were no battles, naval or land battles whatsoever but rest assured this is something that will happen at the start of the next round especially up here in Newcastle so they will really have an incentive to build more firepower there and really try to decimate some of the tripods of this wave two up there. I really hope you are enjoying my playthrough so far and really hope to see you in my next episode of my playthrough of the War of the Worlds, the England edition. And yeah, see you then. Bye bye.